Welcome now to the News Belt, and we get straight into our first story. 21-year-old Melsa Efia Anochiwa has chosen to work instead of further her education for now so she can help her younger siblings access education. This act has seen her venture into a male-dominated workspace, which is not only challenging her but to keep being better, but has also inspired her to help others. She shares her story of hope with Hannah Odami. She's had to put on hold pursuing her education. The aspiring journalist Melsa Efia Anochoa is now hungry to make money because she has siblings to take care of. I wanted to become a journalist. A journalist? Yes, please. And so do you still have that ambition or you've just packed it somewhere? I still have it, but I packed it because there was no financial support. I lost my dad when I completed SHS. There was no financial support, so I had to stop work and support my mom to take care of my other siblings. And me being the oldest, I think it is a duty for me to help and support the family whenever and however I can. Right after completing senior high school, she ventured into finding jobs and she's done quite a lot. I want to work hard, get money because I don't want to be depending on anybody or become a burden or a liability for anybody. So I want to work hard, make ends meet for myself and also get something to support the family. Her hard work in customer service and her spots from one good company to another. Well, on our next story, the Allied Health Professions Council has begun a clampdown on quack healthcare facilities and unregistered practitioners across the country. The Health Professions Regulatory Bodies Act 857 of 2013 empowers the council to enforce compliance of the highest healthcare standards. Well, the council says the new crackdown targeted at laboratories will eliminate quacks from Ghana's healthcare system. There's more in this report. Led by the Deputy Communication Director of the Allied Health Professions Council, AHPC, Kweku Brobi, the monitoring exercise kicked off in the Greater Accra region. The monitoring encompasses equipment, lab infrastructure, and personnel certification. Speaking to Joy News, Deputy Communication Director of AHPC, Kweku Brobe, highlighted recommendations provided to facility managers for necessary adjustment. So far, we have been to two facilities, Ga East and then uh, to Medicas here. And uh, from Ga East, um, I think the outcome was generally good, uh, with the exception of um, a practitioner who was not very um, in, in, in very good standing, but uh, has taken steps, you know, to uh, uh, re to 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 renew her her um, registration with the council. I think um, those were the few issues, and then there were also few uh, structural issues uh, with Ghana East. We have discussed this with the management, and they have promised us that they're going to take care of this. Medicas, um, we have um, identified a number of issues when we went into the, um, uh, the laboratory and we will be uh, discussing this with the, 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 the uh, management of the hospital here, of, of the clinic here in uh, Medina. But of course, we have made uh, a few recommendations and we'll be coming in again. Mr. Broby, however, warned of severe sanctions while urging strict adherence to established standards. This is going to be a major clampdown on people who are practicing, I mean, without the required licenses, without the, the who have not been registered with the, um, with the council. And of course, facilities that are not registered to practice, you know, um, undertake any allied health uh, service. We ask, we are, we, 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 we given out this warning to each and every one of them, and we expect that they take, I mean, notice of this because we'll be coming after each and every one of them who is not in good standing with the council. Head of Laboratory Services at Gan East Hospital, Martha Jani Lamte, emphasized the adverse impact of insufficient lab equipment on healthcare delivery. We had the space for bacteriology especially. We have some equipment. We are lacking some and the reagents as a whole. For other disciplines like the Biochemistries, we are just doing basic chemistry. We could do a lot the hormones, uh, the tumor markers, but we don't have the analyzer to do it. 
So definitely we don't have the reagents as well. It's not helping the clients, I should say. Timely interventions are not readily available for our clients because they either have to go roaming or we subletting the cases and we have to wait on those labs to give us the results before our clients can be attended to. So delay in diagnosis and treatment. Head of Clinical Services at Ghan East Hospital, Dr. Rosanne Sogbewocho, appealed to the Ministry of Health for intervention. Uh, it is clearly that no lab can do everything, but the more we can do, the more our people will benefit from that. Um, there are some of these equipments that are so expensive for the facility to buy. There are some reagents that is difficult to get in the market and it's also so expensive to get. So we are calling our community, philanthropists, donors, supporters who are willing to come to the facility and assist us. So we can get the best and give the best to the community as well. This monitoring initiative is set to cover the entire country by year end. Carlos Calonis reports for Joy News. Well, now the Dean of the School of Medicine at the University for Development Studies, Professor Stephen Taveri, says Ghana needs to take a step towards training more doctors to fill the gap created as a result of the recent exodus of doctors. He spoke during a visit to the Tichiman Holy Family Hospital by key members of the department as part of a joint venture to increase the intake of medical students in the university. Correspondent Anas Sabit has more in this report. In recent years, Doctors, nurses and other health professionals are leaving the country in droves to seek greener pastures in countries that pay good money for their services. The situation according to the Ghana Medical Association is largely fueled by poor working environment coupled with low pay. A situation president of the GMA says could weaken the health sector if proper measures are not put in place to avoid the act. To help deal with the menace, the School of Medicine at the University for Development Studies is collaborating with the Techiman Holy Family Hospital to train more doctors to help bridge the gap. Professor Stephen Tabiri is the Dean of School of Medicine at the University for Development Studies. The purpose of this gathering uh, is to look at how we can increase the number of doctors in Ghana for the agenda or the project of providing universal health care for all Ghanaian citizens, irrespective of where you live. Uh, in order to achieve that, we need to increase the number of doctors that we are training as a nation every year. How do we do that? We, one institution alone, one university alone cannot do it. The only way we can do that and the only way to achieve this is to work together with the institutions coming together, looking at the strength of each institution, and then looking at the weakness of each institution, and then come together to support each other in order to increase the number of doctors for Ghanaians. Professor Stephen Tabiri noted that stopping these health professionals from traveling out of the country would be a difficult thing. However, training more doctors will help address this worrying menace and in turn, the country will have a substantial number to provide the needed health care to the people. It's a worrying development and we cannot also stop them. There will be some mechanism we will try to stop them, but it may be difficult. The only thing we can do is to increase the numbers. So once we are doing this partnership, that will give us the opportunity to increase the numbers so that even if some are going to leave, we're still going to have a substantial number that will provide the needed health care for Ghanaian citizens. For the Tichman Holy Family Hospital that is aiming at becoming a teaching hospital of excellence, the partnership will go a long way to help achieve this fate. Dr. Jacqueline Nasibi is a senior pediatrician specialist at the facility. The vision of Holy Family is to be a teaching um, hospital of excellence. So if we get medical students on board, then it's really in line with our, our vision. Because the good thing is if we train the medical officers, they become doctors, some would want to come and do their internship there and most and specialize. So it's going to be a great one for us. So we get bigger and bigger. And then as it's in our vision, we become a, a teaching hospital of excellence. So it's such a great collaboration for us 
to get the medical students on board. Diocesan Archbishop of the Chiman Most Reverend Dominic Yebonyako on his part assured the two institutions of the support of the Tichman Diocese to help realize this dream. Be assured that the Chiman will offer you the best of clinical training experience. Again, be assured of my personal support and the support of the Catholic Diocese of the Chiman in the successful implementation of this agreement for mutual benefits in Ghana at large. And as Sabit, Joy News, Tichiman. Well, nurses at the Duong Community Health Planning and Services compound can now heave a sigh of relief after a two-bedroom house was handed to them. The nurses were hitherto staying in rented apartments after a storm collapsed to the single room constructed for them. The delivery room at the CHIPS compound was turned into a staff accommodation for a midwife to attend to obstetric emergencies. Rafiq Salam has the rest of the story. One major challenge faced by nurses posted to rural communities is the lack of accommodation. Most of the CHIPS compounds constructed have little accommodation space for the nurses, forcing them to look for accommodation sometimes far away from the facility. The Doon CHIPS compound is no exception. It was constructed for the community by the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA. The community on their own mobilized to put up this single bedroom to accommodate the nurse in charge, who later collapsed three years ago. As a public health nurse and knowing the importance of accommodation to the work of nurses, Queen Mother of the Duan traditional area, Pona Rosemary Bangzie, mobilized resources for the construction of a two-bedroom house to accommodate the nurses. With support from individuals and U.S. aid, she was able to achieve her target. It will interest you to know that the nurses in Duan Chief Compound have been running the facility for over five years without staff accommodation. Because the only staff accommodation that was there was washed away by one rain, one heavy rainstorm in 2018. Since then, majority of the nurses reside in the community and some staff who were posted to the community rejected the posting due to accommodation challenges. Since then, our delivery room has been turned into a staff accommodation just for a midwife to stay closer in case of any obstetric emergency, especially in the nights. Our power social minister, Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali, urged other queen mothers in the region to emulate the example of the Duong Queen Mother by initiating similar projects to improve healthcare delivery in their respective areas. The exceptional leadership of Pogna, Rosemary, which has provided the community with this new facility to accommodate the health personnel stationed here is exemplary and worthy of emulation across the region. I therefore urge the other Queen Mothers who are here to grace the occasion to also initiate such an initiative. Deputy Country U.S. Aid OT Representative Dali Haj Omar spoke of the projects embarked on by his outfit aimed at bettering the lives of the people. USAID's Littoral's Regional Initiative, or LRI, started programming in northern Ghana in April of 2021. We recognize that conflict dynamics in this region, such as intra-Muslim tensions, farmer-herder conflicts, and land and chieftaincy disputes, threaten the region's peace and stability. We are here to help local partners in the north strengthen community cohesion, and to build their capacity to help them identify vulnerabilities and take initiative to resolve local issues peacefully. Our Power Sujan Director of Health Services, Dr. Damien Pouiri, spoke of the benefits that the people will derive from the project. The region currently has 312 chips compounds, which happen to be the highest in the country for now. Over the past few years, the Regional Health Administration has worked with stakeholders to expand access to chief services to services to every part of this region. As of June this year, the region achieved 100% chief functionality. 
This means that every person living in the region has access to a well-trained community health officer within five kilometer radius. However, one key challenge that is facing the 24 hour availability of CHOs in the chief zones is the availability of staff accommodation. For instance, only 62% of these numbers that I mentioned earlier of chief compounds in the region have at least just one staff accommodation. In the absence of staff accommodation, the staff have to commute daily to their workplaces, meaning they will not be available, especially at critical times like in the night. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam, Wong. And in the National Science and Math Quiz, Archbishop Portugal's SHS whisked a last-minute slot to join 80 other schools at the 1A stage following a tiebreaker round against the St. Monica's SHS. The two schools were tied after losing their main contest, but had a chance to qualify as one of the 12 losing schools with good scores. Jacqueline Ansumaya Bois reports. Um, I'm, I'm speaking to one of the contestants right now um, to find out more. How are you feeling now? I realize you were very tense on stage. Just tell me more about it. Well, even though I was very tense, I knew and I believed that God was going to make a way. So all we need was our effort. So we pushed through and with God on our side, we were able to win this type with our contest. Well, it took you guys um, three questions for you to get the answer right. What do you have to say about that moving forward? Because there were a lot of noise behind. Um, there are a lot of people saying that, is it possible that when the chance is given to you guys, you'd be able to live up to it? What do you have to say about that? Yes, you live up to the chance given to us because we've actually worked for this. It was um, a mistake that happened at a preliminary stage that we lost with one point. But God has given us the second chance to come back. And this time we are going to prepare, prepare very well to meet up to the expectations of our school. Well, moving up in the contest, we are going to meet other bigger schools. Well, as to we have every girls with like 52 points, other schools they have like 66 points, and other um, points that we it's very high. Uh, do you think you'd be able to contend with that moving forward? Um, we believe in God and in ourselves that if we put in more efforts, we are going to get there. So, all we have to do is to just work hard and to pray to God, and we believe that we are going to do it and we are going to make it. So we just heard from um, the student right um, at Archbishop Potter's Girls and I am right here with um, one of their teachers. Tell me how you feel right now. Oh, it right was now. a tense moment up there. How yeah. do you feel? In fact, uh, it wasn't easy waiting to this time and in fact, God has really made it for us. Uh -huh. When we're coming, at least you will see that victory was all, all over us. Uh -huh. It took like three questions before your girls got yes. it right. Mm -hmm. At that moment, how did you feel? The first one was wrong, the second one was wrong. Then we got to the third one. How did you feel um, in those moments? Mm, it wasn't easy. Uh -huh. It wasn't easy, but I knew definitely we'll, 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 we'll go through. Uh -huh. But moving forward, what should we expect from Archbishop Potter Girls? We are praying we'll get to, that is our main uh, aim, is to be seated. That's our first objective. Uh -huh. So definitely we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Once you are being seated, do you think that your school would be able to become one of the first ever female schools to um, be crowned as the National Science and Math Quiz winner? Definitely. For this year, that is our target. I uh -huh. want Archbishop Potter Girls to be the first girl school to win the National Science and Math Quiz, and we'll definitely get there. Right. Well, we just heard from a teacher from Archbishop um, Potter's Girls, and he is saying that he's very optimistic um, about the performance of his girls, and that uh, moving forward, his school um, will become one of the first female schools to win the National Science and Math Quiz. Still right here at Sarah Mensah Hall, I am Jacqueline Ansuma Yeboa.
It's a wrap now on the AM News. Up next, I'm joined by Dr. Peter Antti for the News Review. Do stay.